Instagram. November 19th is uh, Swami on his 70th birthday. It's a day. And happy to be there at that time. So it was just a profound feeling to experience. Because uh, always I loved my mom very much. She was married at the age of 12. My dad was 17. This is sacrificed all of us. And she always instilled on us to. She always prayed, said, uh, we would come from a modest family. So she always prayed for us, have, provide always ghee rice and good education. That was her blessing. You know? and, uh, so I remember my mom, my wife of 34 years, and my sister, many relatives, uh, uncle, aunties, and all that. So I have a tremendous respect for women. So I'm delighted to see all of you sisters here. Thank you. Um, all the brothers also, I like them all. I, I, I grew up with two other brothers, unfortunately they passed on. And the older brother was the one who brought me to the United States in 1979. When I had a conflict with uh, my dad, like some of you teenagers may be able to relate to, that uh, at some point you disagree with your parents, and that was my situation. I reached out to my brother, who was a psychiatrist who came here in 1968. Help me, just send me 200 rupees per month. I want to leave home. <laughs> I want to move on. So my grades were not good. I was, uh, I had failed in SSLC exam in high school where I got only 29 marks in English. So I was held back for a year. And again, pre-university, the 12th grade exam also I failed one year. Now looking back, those were two years extra. Swami gave me opportunity to spend time with my parents. It, not, not knowing, now, at that time it was so difficult and I was so dejected, because in my, <clears throat> in, in our community and our caste, my dad was the first one to go to college. And then my brother was the next one to excel in studies, came in, to America at age 24 with scholarship. So I was always compared that, uh, <clears throat> He is uh, he's the wetland where you grow commercial crops. I'm the dry land. So I, I'm uh, meant to stay home and take care of my elderly parents. Of course, Swami had other plans. So now looking back, when I practice, try to share the message of oneness of all with uh, every opportunity I get. You'll see, if you are on Facebook, you'll see the postings all the time about the message of Swami's, uh, different message of Swami, but all leads to we are one. That's because the same creator is worshipped by many, many different names. Allah, Buddha, Jesus, Devi, Shiva, Narayana, whatever is dear to you. That is the source of energy we have to tap into. We have to realize uh, towards the end of Swami's life, Swami talked about practice Atma Abhimana, not Deha Abhimana. And Swami always talked about we are three. One, those who think who we are, that's the body. And those who think what I think, what others think of me, that's the mind. And the one who really are is the Atma. So he always started out his discourse as divine embodiment of love. We never said there are rich man, poor man, or collector, or lawyer, teacher. Everyone you always look at uh, that he is the embodiment of truth, love. Swami always emphasized, you are the embodiment of truth. You are the embodiment of love. Realize who you are. That is the greatest service you can provide. If we experience that uh, Atmic awareness, Swami has said, as Sri Sola has said in his uh, talk, that seven generations going backwards and forwards will, will, uh, will Swami will look after their well-being, all of them. 
So we have to move towards uh, that at Atma Vimana. How much time I have? Uh, how much time I have? <laughs> I've given 10 minutes time, so I'm trying to move through quickly here. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so the, uh, the idea is that uh, all the great teachers of the world came to this earth. We just sang this uh, bhajan, Satyam Shivam Sundaram. That is truth, awareness, and beauty. That's what we are. That is, the awareness is the truth that we are this Atma. As Atma, we have been sent on this earth to experience God's love and share that God's love with all of God's creation, all the people who are put into our life. So with that, we, have, we are here to resolve our conflicts with our parents, with our spouses, especially wife is, you know, people make joke of it, saying, uh, worry, invited, forever. That's not wife, but it's, it's really wisdom, invited, forever. So please don't be, take offense of what I said. So you always look at the uh, quality of a small child, how innocent, how beautiful, the child is, he smiles at everyone. You, you interact very easily with them. So be like, be childlike. That's what Jesus also said, kingdom, kingdom of heaven is closer to the one who is childlike. In other words, in order to get rid of our body consciousness, which results in pride, prejudice, ego, anger, all these things, because we, we, we are bombarded with uh, advertisements, with all the desires. So more desires we have, less peace and joy we have. So Swami always talked about sealing and desires. That is, uh, have the desires, but in a modest way. And he compared the money. Money should be like the size of shoes. If the size of shoe is too big, you trip and fall down. If the size of shoes is too small, it hurts. Because it, it pinches, you know. So have a modest income, always uh, give time to God, make a daily appointment with God of your choice. Doesn't matter who it is, Allah, Buddha, Shiva, Jesus, uh, Zoroastra, even now Swami is gone, so the formless. If Swami is dear to you, I uh, like always uh, look to Swami because He is the one who gave me this understanding. As Sister mentioned, uh, 1979 at uh, St. Louis retreat, uh, my new sister-in-law had come from India. She was a Swami, Swami devotee. They invited me. That's how I was introduced to Swami. With uh, a bringing of devotion with my mom, always sending me to the Rama temple in our village. That was the only social interaction we, we had. So that, the, when I heard the Swami's bhajans, it, uh, the floodgate of uh, tears opened up. So I know I did not consider him as God or a friend, but some intimacy, the closeness was felt. And then 1980, when uh, Swami was, I was privileged to have the interview with uh, my sister-in-law, two of us uh, went to the interview room in uh, Whitefield, and uh, I was a fresh MBA graduate, you know, so I had my suit on, and I, I didn't know what I was getting into. I sat next to Swami. He let me, let me, my sister, my sister-in-law almost uh, fell off the floor. She was just uh, panicking, she was like, what happened here? But looking back, Swami then asked, you know, what do you want? I, I didn't have any conversation, I was just smiling, I was enjoying myself, my sister-in-law had some private questions. And then he, uh, Swami materialized the Vibhuti, he patted me in the back. So it was all a silent communication. So coming, coming back to U.S. in 1980, May, then the career change happened. I had to move from, I was living in Ann Arbor, Michigan. I was uh, working in Detroit, Michigan at that time. I had finished my bachelor's and master's at the time. So I, I was transported to Oklahoma. So I tried to be uh, a native Indian, imitating, I'm an American Indian, to, as a South Asian Indian to Native American. So I attended some of the uh, interaction with the uh, Osage Indians there, various functions and activities were there. And as I was going up as undergraduate students, we were part of the Baptist church, it was part of the Islamic culture. Very exposed to it, coming from a small town, very with, uh, interacted only with about 100 people in our town. It, 
it was just all of us and Swami was putting me into a different dimension to show that uh, all these people belong to that universal creator, you know, love everyone. So Swami had the, I mean, so, so through Swami's uh, blessing, I was going to, I was working full time, I was going to law school at night time, commuting 50 miles one way, 100 miles over four years. During that time, Swami arranged the marriage. Uh, is uh, Swami, uh, I, those days there was no Facebook, WhatsApp, so I put an ad in the <laughs> India abroad, and uh, my wife was one of the people who responded, and she rejected me the first time. Everything in my life has happened uh, second go around, you know, and, uh, failing in uh, high school and college, and then also eventually I got married uh, to uh, my wife, who's from Pakistan. Again, he's showing me. The India and Pakistan always hate each other, you know, but they are living in the same roof for 34 years. He blessed me with three children. They all went through Balvikas. And then uh, he once I became a lawyer. There was a big gap from 1980 to 1991. Family, children activity was to cover. Swami, I completely forgot about Swami. And in fall of 1991, I'm just looking to see, make sure I don't exceed my time. <laughs> Uh, in fall of 1991, all of a sudden I was getting uh, questions as to, okay, all right, I reached, I came to America even though I didn't expect to be here, got married, the children, uh, became a lawyer working for a company. What's the goal of life? You know, why am I here? What's the purpose? Why was sent to this earth? So all this the question of who I am, why I'm here, where I'm supposed to go, all these questions start popping up. Soon enough, three months later, I lost my job. My boss called me, and uh, my children were seven, five, and two. In the market, my wife being housewife, so difficult. Then uh, moved to about a year, I looked for jobs, uh, applied for several, uh, 5,000 resumes I sent out, but nothing worked out. So I went to be in New York, my sister-in-law was here, I moved to New York and then uh, eventually get into the immigration area. So where I was practicing mostly refugee law, where people seeking asylum from different countries, I was helping them, where I am seeking refuge from the God. That, uh, in other words, all this transformation happened to show that, that we have come from God, we are with God, and we are going back to God. The journey is always between the birth and the death and the choice we make. In other words, it's be, birth, and death. That's already fixed. We cannot shorten our lifespan or expand our lifespan. The only thing is the C in between, B, C, D. It's the choice we make, the choice how we chose to live here. That is uh, love of God, fear of sin, and uh, morality in society. Those three things gives us peace, joy, comfort, and everything. Swami always takes care of our need. He's the one who controls our breath. He's the one, how many breaths we have, how long we have to live. So at least I was blessed to have realized this truth that we are this one. So because we are because we are one, that's what uh, has prompted me to now, uh, through Swami's grace, I've chosen the name Brother Oneness. So that's how I'm going to different interfaith meetings. Uh, yeah, this week we were at the Muslim prayer group and then we went to the church. Uh, various things we're trying to do. So in closing, what I would like to say is that start the day with love, fill the day with love, and end the day with love. Always remember, God loves you closer than your own eyelids. You know, with the eyes protected with eyelids. So he's, he's so close to you, it just, we just have to reach out. We always have to go inward. That is, uh, that is. And then three paths are there. That is devotion, uh, the knowledge path, uh, the service. So whichever path attracts to you, Always, always remember God. Please uh, join me in uh, saying two things. God 
loves you. Amen.